The Black Management Forum has echoed the Public Investment Corporation's criticism over APSA Bank's appointment of Ari Rutenberg as its new CEO. I'm joined now by BMF Deputy President Ese Tu Mangnojwa. Thank you so much for your time, Ese Tu. The justification from APSA is, of course, that the new CEO has been appointed on merit. What exactly is the discontent on the side of the BMF? Um, thanks to the Newsroom Africa viewers. Thanks for having us um, on, on this evening. Um, I think this, this just for us is disappointing because it just continues on a trend at APSA of these untransformative um, executive appointments. And the reason why I will say so, if I can just briefly just mention a few, is in about May of 2017, if we recall, there was a walkout by APSA, black APSA employees when um, Pagamani Hadele was not appointed to the role of CEO of the CIB, um, where everybody would have expected that he was shoe in for the position and he was the right person for the position, and he wasn't appointed. And there was that walkout um, in protest by black um, employees at APSA. Then subsequent to that, in about 2019, you saw Nomkita Mweni, who was the head of their wealth investment, I think, investment management business. Um, she also suddenly left the group. Um, and, and then um, in 2019, um, there was another incident of an executive um, suddenly leaving the group. Um, and then just last year, it was the Daniel Minele incident. And once again, as the BMF, we engaged the AFSA board when that incident happened. And we were assured that um, the, the appointment of the next CEO would consider both succession planning and the transformation imperatives. And if we cast our minds a little bit back, they said that the, 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 the disagreement really with Daniel Minele was around strategic and cultural differences. And so are we to assume then that a white Afrikaans male is the right person for, for the role who does not have such disagree disagreements with the board on strategic and more in particular on cultural um, differences? And so for us, um, uh, something that we've also noticed is that Mongiwe Gangeni, who was the deputy to Ari Rotenbach, um, as the CEO of the CIB, also suddenly left and went to Standard Chartered. I think that was towards the end of last year, if not the beginning of this year. So for us, it's less about Ari Rotenbach. We have no doubt that he is um, on merit the best person for the job. But our problem is with this trend and the structures in APSA that have made a white Afrikaans male the only person who was a shoe in for the role. And that's really where we, we are taking issue. It's not with the individual, mm -hmm. but clearly there is a culture uh, and the structures within APSA have given us this result. And that's what we take issue with. Essentially, let me also ask you this, particularly around uh, what you mentioned as a transformation agenda that uh, needs to be adopted by APSA. To what extent is that uh, meant to look like what you are describing as the Black Management Forum, especially in a country such as South Africa, where diversity has become at the core of the so-called rainbow nation, and in business, of course, uh, in the banking industry, this matter has been debated at length, uh, even in the times uh, where we saw at uh, Standard Bank uh, Sim Shabalala being uh, co-parenting there in that CEO mm -hmm. role. So firstly, we'd like to say, I mean, I, we spoke at, a B, at the BE annual conference on Friday, myself and a number of other people, and um, the transformation, the, 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 the financial services sector is one that has historically and up to this day really disappointed in terms of meeting their transformation imperatives. And so we called this out to say, why is this? such a resistance um, to transformation in, in, in the sector in general. And APSA, unfortunately, just keeps finding themselves at the forefront of this anti-transformation agenda. The reason why it's important is not just because we want black people in these senior positions earning certain salaries, no. It is because the strategies and the very cultures of these organizations are set at the board and at the executive leadership position, even to an extent of who the bank funds. So so this filters down not only to the morale of black people within the within APSA who just don't see a future for themselves, but also remember that even things like incentives, bonuses, succession planning, promotions, all these things happen at an executive level. And if you don't see 
black executives at this level, then we simply just reproduce um, this, this, this white dominance and particularly a white male dominance because the people who are making the decisions identify with that kind of person. And so we're not actually surprised that um, uh, AFSA is telling us that um, Mr. Rotenbach is just the right person for the job because there's a culture in AFSA that seeks to reproduce um, the, this kind of lens of, of a white male dominance at the top. And we see every year when the Commission for Employment Equity releases their results that black people tend to swell the ranks at the unskilled, semi-skilled, junior management level, and then they just, they just tend to disappear. And the examples that are made of the executives that have left APSA, who could have been in a position to take over this role, is an example of that. Why is it that at a certain level, black executives just find it rather better to exit APSA than to stay the course, hoping that one day they will be in the very strategic position of group CEO. What's to be said then about the APSA board itself being predominantly black and of course having weight over this decision? The only thing that we can decipher is that there are greater powers at play here than the APSA board itself, because as we've also noted that it is a majority black board, we've got the appointment of a black chairperson recently, um, who we really, um, we, as the BMF, we've got a very good relationship with. And we've asked to engage him and his board on this, on, on, on this appointment, um, as it really has disappointed us. But the only thing that we can gather, but we cannot confirm until we've engaged with them, is that perhaps there's the owners of capital, the shareholders of APSA, there's, there's just greater powers at play at APSA that just override any sort of transformation and black succession planning um, that is being attempted within the group. And, and that's why we keep ending up with this result. And so we really aim to engage the board, the chairperson of the board, and we've also sent a letter to the CEO congratulating him on his appointment, but not mincing our words on how disappointed we are um, at, at the fact that on what we perceive as a reversal, really, of transformation um, in the sector and at APSA in particular. We'll leave it there for this evening. That is uh, the BMF's uh, Deputy President, S.A. Tu Mangodra, talking to us about that criticism leveled against uh, APSA with regards uh, to a lack of transformation in the new appointment of its uh, CEO.